When is the last time you saw a car? Let me show you one. What you see here is a cute cow. You can trust me. I'm a livestock scientist. I know my cows. However, to answer my previous question, I bet it was a while ago you last saw a real cow. Most of you here eat dairy product way more often than you see a cow or meet a farmer. Why is that? I, for one, drink milk every day with my coffee, but my daily life in Göttingen is not more dairy than that. And I don't know who produced my milk. But if I would have lived in 19th century London, I would have brought fresh milk every day directly from a dairy producer. At the time, you could not transport milk very far or very long before it got spoiled. So you had the cow where the people were, that is in the city. Not around, but really in the city. So in 1829, there were 70 cow sheds scattered all over London to supply its residents. Then came the Industrial Revolution with tremendous technological advances in food preservation and transport. Thanks to them, it was possible to transport fresh milk every day from the countryside to the city. So cows and other livestock we moved to the countryside where the other agricultural activities were already happening. And at the time, it seemed completely natural to have livestock moving out of the city. It still does. But as our world become every day more urban, we might want to question its dichotomization. Urban area consume nearly all the food produced in the world, but food is almost exclusively produced in rural areas. And that's the topic of my talk today, rethinking our food system for an urban world. In 2020s, what has to be changed in the design of our food system because of urbanization? And if you are already thinking, oh great, another talk about urban vertical farm, I love them. Well, sorry, it's a great topic indeed, but today is not about stacking up cows in vertical farms. What I want to do with you is to focus on urbanization, its impact on our food system, and how to rethink them, mostly through the example of dairy production. Can't help it, I do love cows. The question of rethinking our food system for an urban world is important here in Europe, but also for the global south. In the next decade, urban growth will be the most intensive in Asia and Africa. So first of all, what is urbanization? Let's go with a loose definition. Urbanization is a transformation of a rural area into a city. What we are interested in is a major impact of urbanization. One so obvious, it goes without saying for most people, the dichotomization of rural and urban areas. And now it's already the second time I'm using this term dichotomization. What do I mean by that? If you think about it, cities are where people consume food. Rural areas are where people produce food. And these area or activity barely overlaps. That's the dichotomization of rural and urban areas. But urban areas are previously rural areas. And if you go really back, back, back to the origin of human settlement, what you find is agriculture. It is because people started to cultivate crops that there was a need for them to settle down, to start cities. So despite rural and urban areas being dichotomized in our mind today, they are in reality tightly linked to each other. First and foremost, by all the food coming from rural area up to the fridge of every urban consumer. It's a huge, very strong rural urban linkage and very efficient. But this flow of agricultural products is impacted by our demand as consumer. It's defined what is produced in rural area, how much and how. For example, buying organic product influences the management practice of a farm. What we tend to forget, however, is the effect that the use of resources has on us, the consumer. For every product we consume, 
resources have been used to produce it, right? But what this use of resources mean is often revealed only on the long term, which is a real problem when the consequences are negative. Think about palm oil production in Indonesia and what it's mean for our environment, or deforestation in Amazonia for beef and soya. These are the consequences of our consumption, and that's what we call an ecological feedback. Let me show you these 20 everyday products. They are very familiar to us. Everyone already saw a pizza in their life. But the fact that these everyday products contain palm oil is not very familiar to us. Neither is the scratch landscape of the Indonesian forest. However, they are linked together. Deforestation in Indonesia or Amazonia, a classical massive example, for the sake of the argument, very simplistic, of how consumers living in urban areas lose awareness of where the product comes from and the impact they may have on the environment. Let's take example closer to home, large scale biodiversity loss in Europe, water pollution, salt degradation. These are all ecological feedback. And what they are telling us, it's that the way we produce our food today is one of the biggest reasons for environmental degradation. Urbanization changed our relationship to food system and their modern design failed ecological feedbacks. Without ecological feedback, we don't know when we overuse resources. Thus, our food system become more unsustainable. So if we want to build better, more sustainable food system for our urban world, how should we rethink them? Well, we need to rethink them as multifunctional. But the good news is it's pretty easy because they are already multifunctional. We just need to understand it, acknowledge it, and reward it. So let's start by understand why multifunctional. Well, simply because agriculture is not just about producing food. Back to our cute cow. If I ask you why this cow is kept for, most of you will tell me milk or meat. Few of you will tell me it's kept for manure, it's a family tradition, or it's a saving account. In many places, livestock still have this traditional multiple function. But in an urban world, rural activity tend to focus only on production to answer the demand of us, the consumer. Thus, we assess the value of our rural area and our food system solely based on productivity we turn farmers into businessmen and women. The problem is that, yes, farmers do produce food, but what they are actually doing is exploiting natural resources on our behalf. They are the key between us and the environment. Let's look at Switzerland. Almost 30 years ago, Switzerland focused its agricultural policy on the multifunctionality of agriculture. Swiss farmers get subsidies for preserving the natural foundation of life. They don't get subsidies for producing food. They get subsidies to preserve the environment while they are producing food. And there is a real trade-off between the income they get from their rural activities and the subsidies they get for preserving the environment. So this policy do not solve the problem of failed ecological feedbacks, nor is perfect. But it does two things nicely. First, it acknowledges and rewards the use of rural resources for other purposes than food production, such as having a beautiful landscape. And I kid you not, that's one of the objectives of the Swiss agricultural policy. Second, this policy acknowledges and rewards the key role of farmer, not as just food producer, but as a steward of our biosphere. So now that we know that agriculture is not just about producing food, what does everyone miss when they think that food system is just about feeding people? As it happens a lot. Let me show you this picture from the mega city of Bangalore, Southern India. 
it was taken less than five kilometers from the city center. And Bangalore have 10 million inhabitants, plus a lot of cows whose number is yet to be exactly counted. This picture is business as usual. So now I just either confirm you the cliche that in India, there are cows everywhere, or I really confuse you. Why would cow be kept in the middle of the city? This is not 19th century London. But this is what is hidden in this picture, a complex food system. And feeding people is only one benefit. As you might know, cow are holy in India. Thus, one additional benefit from their presence in the city is simply the enjoyment people have from them. Another benefit is that very often these cows are fed organic waste from household or vegetables market. So urban cows are recycling low quality organic waste into high quality animal protein, again, to the benefit of the consumer. But the fact that in Bangalore, cows are integral part of the urban landscape also benefits the urban producer themselves. So first, they make an income from it, which is nice because they might not know another job. Second, they can themselves be integrated in the city. So they can access urban infrastructure, such as school or hospital for their family, way more easily than if they would live in rural area. And this is the same infrastructure that urban consumers have access to all the time. And third, their cultural identity as dairy producer is preserved. So from tomorrow onward, should we have hundreds of cattle in Göttingen? Not exactly. This system is not perfect. And let's face it, not everyone would be keen on having cows in the street. But it is important to acknowledge that food systems are not just about feeding people. They have multiple social functions too. So my vision for the next decade is not cows in the street, but that we rethink the purpose of our food system. It's not just about producing food. It's not just about feeding people. The food system of our urban worlds are complex social ecological system. And we need to account for the multiple function because they impact which resources are being used, where and how. Only then can we start to build better, more sustainable food system in which resources are not overused despite weakened ecological feedbacks because we would not just use resources for producing food. We would use resources while preserving biodiversity and the cultural identity of producer. We would produce food while supporting climate regulation and the livelihood of producer. We would produce food while maintaining the access of urban consumer to nature and the access of producer to infrastructure. In particular, we would give again our producer the key role between us and the environment. So next time you see a cow, think about the milk it produces, the meat it gives, how cute she is, but also that she's so much more than that. <laughs>